Robbie Robertson. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce to you the guest speaker, Dr. Keith Holland. A Jacksonville native, Dr. Holland graduated from St. John's in the class of 1968. He attended Brevard College in North Carolina for two years and then Florida State University. Furthermore, Dr. Holland received his degree in dentistry from the Virginia College, uh, the Medical College of Virginia at Richmond. He now is married, has two children, and is currently directing the salvage of the steamship Maple Leaf. Ladies and gentlemen, in the class of 1994, I bring you Dr. Keith Von Holland. Good evening, honored guests, faculty, parents, friends, and especially graduates. You've made it. Finally, you are here. And what a wonderful and exciting time this must be for you. You are getting ready to embark on probably the greatest adventure of your life, the rest of your life. And I had accepted to come here and speak to you because I want to tell you something. You can be anything, you can do anything you want. You are only limited by your imagination. I want to give you two jewels to take with you as you leave St. John's and begin this adventure. The first is about setting goals. And I don't mean temporary, transient, superficial goals like what you plan to have happen tonight after graduation. I mean real life goals. Like what do I want to do after college? What do I want to do? How do I want to earn my living? Where do I want to live the rest of my life? I mean real goals, life goals. You need to think about these goals. I'm sure many of you don't know what you want to do when you graduate from college. Please don't waste that precious time drifting from class to class, wandering through college without focusing on what you want out of it. Figure out what you want to be, what you want to do, and then work toward that goal. If you don't, your college education could be wasted. In 1968, every member of my graduating class went to college because that's what was expected of us. It was the most natural step after graduating from a college preparatory high school. But very few of us knew what we wanted out of life. Some graduated from college and still to this day don't know what they want to be. But those who have successful careers, they decided what they wanted to be after college and they decided early. You need to do that too. Now I know it may be hard and it may even seem impossible for some of you to decide today what you want to do 10 years from now. But listen, listen to me. If you possibly can do that, you will have an advantage over all those others that cannot. When I was a senior at St. John's, I worked with Taylor Hardwick. He's an architect. Worked with him during career week. He told me something that day that stuck with me and has become a source of power through the years. He said that if I could imagine something, if I could picture it in my head, then it could be drawn and it could be built. What I learned from that is if you can visualize yourself doing something, if you can visualize yourself being something, if you can mentally picture it, then you can make it happen. You make that a goal, you point yourself in that direction, chart a course, and then you maneuver yourself toward it. Go for it. No matter how impossible it might seem to you now, each day, each week, every year, the little successes will add to each other until you make that goal. At St. John's, I was an average student. I was the guy who got an F in PE because I refused to wear clean socks. 
I was the class clown and I was proud of it. But on the first day of college, I decided I wanted to be a dentist. And seven years later, I was the youngest dentist student to ever graduate from the Medical College of Virginia's dental school. Now, how was that possible? How could I possibly have done that? I set a goal. I knew what I wanted out of college early. I pushed myself in that direction and I never gave up. You can do that too. If you don't already know what you want, then it is time to start thinking about it. And let me tell you, don't limit yourself to what others think you are capable of doing. doing. Consider everything. Nothing should be dismissed as being beyond your reach. Permit yourself to see only challenges, not obstacles. Allow yourself to experience only persistence, not failure. You are only limited by what you can imagine and your willingness to take a chance and your ability to be flexible and focused. If you want to limit yourself, limit the goals you set only to what you want and what become important to you, even if what you want appears to be foolish and ridiculous by others. In 1984, something ridiculous captured my imagination and wouldn't let go of me. I found a historical document describing a ship that sank in our St. John's River that could possibly contain the largest quantity and variety of Civil War material known to exist. It was so huge, so large, so historically significant that I wanted to go for it. At first, I was the only single person who believed in it, who believed that the maple leaf might possibly be entombed in the river, still fully loaded with cargo and well-preserved. I found myself initially in the midst of total and absolute skepticism. It was, after all, hard to believe. Skeptics would ask me, well, if it's so important, why haven't I heard of it? Why hasn't someone else found it? Nothing could possibly survive that long under the water. What makes you think you can do it? The list goes on. Even who cares? Well, I care. I cared so much that I made it a goal. I charted a course and I stuck to it. I saw no obstacles, I saw only wonderful challenges and soon there were others who believed. As months turned into years, what initially seemed impossible in fact became reality. Eight days ago, the Maple Leaf Shipwreck Site was nominated as the fourth national historic landmark in our country. We have the Monitor, the Utah, the Arizona, and now the Maple Leaf. My point is that no matter how crazy your goal may appear to others, no matter how unrealistic and unattainable it might seem today, if it is important enough to you, if you care enough about it, if you are persistent in trying to attain that goal, then it will happen. The other jewel that I wish to leave with you is called, I call it a tent. It is so natural, so common, so clearly obvious to us all that we seem to take it for granted. And that jewel is my friendship. I offer it to each of you as a token, symbolic of all of your friendships. Look around at all the wonderful friends you have made during your years at St. John's. Your classmates, your teachers, your parents, and all the people in this audience who have come to celebrate this landmark event in your life. Goals are necessary if we plan to be successful, but our relationships and how we interact with others are even more important because it is our friends who will help us become successful. It is, in fact, through these intangible experiences that we measure our success. I did not become a dentist unaided, but with the help of my teachers, my roommates, my high school buddies, my parents. 
They are my friends, and I will always remember them. I did not raise the maple leaf from, from obscurity to national recognition unaided. But with the help of my friends who are lawyers, divers, historians, my wife, my family, I will never forget them. There are many successful people in this world who have few friends or no friends because of how they treat other people. They are miserable failures as human beings. Let me tell you, 26 years ago, I left this ceremony as a graduate. I stand before you tonight because I have accomplished a few things in my life by setting goals. You see me now as a 43-year-old man who is feeling the autumn season of his life approaching. I no longer weigh my wealth by those things that I have accomplished in my life. Nor do I weigh it by those things that I have carefully collected, those physical ornaments that I choose to decorate my life with. But by things that I will take no money for. If you take nothing from here tonight, take this. Whether or not you choose to set goals for yourself, whether or not you choose to accomplish something important in your life, in the end, what will be important to you, what will mean the most, are your friends. Now tonight, you sit here in front of me as the graduate, in front of this entire audience, and we see you in your prime. You are young, strong, resourceful, enthusiastic, you are in the spring of your life. You are excited about the anticipation of going off to college. And that's what this graduation is about. Being on your own. Finally, you will be in control of your own destiny. And on behalf of this audience and myself, I want to wish you that you shall stay young and be strong as you realize your goals and your friendships through a long, successful life. Thank you.